We're outside 650 Parliament, and that's near Parliament in Bloor. This was a six alarm fire uh, that started in uh, the hydro vault in the basement. smoke traveling up on all floors and the power out in this building. I was not mentally prepared for this emergency. People, they don't know what to do. And this community with all huge numbers of people must be uh, some people to manage this kind of emergency. That was one building and the fallout continues to ripple out and the issues continue to unfold and get worse as uncertainty grows, as hotel rooms run out, as we don't know where people are going to go or how. My name is Samia and I am living in 650 Parliament. The building got fired on August 21st at, at around about 12 to 1 o'clock. So that time when, when the fire go, the alarm was going on, that time I was at home. But I have no idea what to do. Outside in the corridor, that was darkness. So I was scared. I heard the women, I heard the cry of child children. The smoke spread in my rooms, in my living rooms. So that time it was very dangerous. So to breathe inside. The 650 fire happened uh, late in August and people were unable to sort of figure out what was going on for one and certainly people who had English as a second language would have had a struggle because while they were giving people instructions over the intercom not everybody could necessarily understand them. Unfortunately most people didn't have any form of preparation or things like flashlights and the like that they could have used to navigate dark hallways and figure out where to go. I have no charger at time. I have no flashlight in my home. And outside is darkness. Inside I have nothing. So that time I was crying that time. I have no idea what I do. And my, I didn't eat whole day so I, my legs were shivering and the Maybe I was standing all day in the balcony. Everyone, everyone was uh, uh, searching for the shelter that time. Where I go, where I should go there, and where we should spend night, or where I go for after that. When this, hap this happened in uh, 650, that uh, fire, I saw that yellow tape, and they, were affected the, they affected the whole people from there. And I, could, I couldn't help everyone. I have like organization, but uh, it is uh, our capacity to help maybe three families or five families, but not 1,000 families. It's a lot of people to be helped. The problem in, in, in all that, uh, they were not prepared for anything. You know, it's really important that people are prepared and that they know that there's a plan and they know who to talk to, they know where to go. Uh, there was a lot of confusion about where to go and what to do. The fire, it didn't affect uh, physically the people, but it affected the people emotionally. Mm -hmm. So what happened in 650, it may happen in my building, which is 200. It may happen in other, other buildings. And the whole community are coming from trauma, most of the people. Most of us are refugees, immigrants, and we are trying to get rid of our traumas and to integrate in Canadian culture. And most of the people, they know that, oh, we are living in Canada, we are safe. But unfortunately, it was not safe for these kids. I felt big responsibility and I felt like their parents themselves they are not stable so how can they help their kids the red cross was called in which is what the city does and that was you know of course helpful um, on the other hand there were other parts of the community which would have and could have assisted people but there's no sort of system to be aware of what resources we have here and who can do what for whom i think it indicates a lack of capacity to respond to a variety of events that can occur because of climate change. You know, this one building going down was a pretty big problem, and yet what happens if all these buildings went down? And we have somewhere between 20 and 23,000 people displaced. 
you know, plus the whole city was down, for instance, like in the 2003 blackout. So we had started a residence co-op in order to be able to have residents start building our on-site capacity. And we invited crew, the Community Resilience to Extreme Weather people, because they had a clear agenda to work with residents to make um, the community more resilient. They have a pilot that we are helping them to build to involve local churches and organizations in um, asset mapping and figuring out what we have and what we need in order to have a more resilient community for extreme weather events and to make sure that the issue of food security isn't lost in that process. Our Oasis Food Hub is also looking at varieties of responses to emergencies in terms of food and water security and we need this kind of collaboration and working together with residents in order to make this community safe and more secure and more prepared. I hope that in the future they will have the, uh, emergency plans, they will have like the resilience for each community to manage all the problems which is happening to the community, not only to give some food or to give something. It's not enough for this disaster which, which is coming.